Welcome to Football Letter Live. We're back for another season of Penn State football, and we're bringing you highlights, Nittany Lion insight, behind the scenes stories of some of the most memorable games and moments in Penn State history. You're going to hear from some of the biggest names and most accomplished players who have worn the blue and white, and you're also going to learn how Penn Staters rally around football through our alumni association chapters and how you can join in the fun this season and support our Nittany Lions. If you love Penn State, then you're in the right place. Where else would you rather be? This is Football Letter Live. Well, hey, John Petitna, we are back for another season of Football Letter Live. And tonight we're welcoming the Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Sandy Barber. We're going to talk to Letterman wide receiver, Jordan Norwood. We have the Madison Chapter President, Philip Bauer, with us here. And we're also going to preview Saturday's game against Wisconsin and let you know how you can cheer on the Nittany Lions all season long. But, John, excited about another season a football letter live. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, the fall sports season has kicked off with the women's soccer team. We're blessed to work on the University Park campus. Students are back. There's always an inherent energy that they bring with them. We're here in the summer and we can hear kind of like that roar of the students coming back for the fall semester when they're on campus. Football opener is two days away. It's, you know, every season in Happy Valley special, but fall just has a certain feel to it. So yeah, it's, I think we're in for a fun season, both on the field and hopefully with the show too. Absolutely. Okay. Now, audience, it's a little bit of a different format, a little more interactive this year than than last year. And so we want you to share questions and shout outs in the chat areas on Facebook and on YouTube. And we're going to share as many of those on screen during the show tonight as we possibly can. We are getting on a flight tomorrow, John, headed to uh, Wisconsin, headed to Madison. We have a Friday night mixer up there which is sold out. We have over 700 Penn Staters signed up for the pep rally. Really excited about the environment that we're going to be in up in Wisconsin. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we know, you know, Penn State alumni are among the most passionate alumni in the world, probably the most passionate. You know, you talk with players and coaches, it doesn't matter where they play. They know fans will travel. They travel to Ireland. Certainly we're going to travel to Madison and, you know, it's, it's, it's also going to be fun for us, too. You know, we haven't had a whole lot of opportunities to interact with alumni and, and friends in person. And I think, you know, we've all missed that on some level. So, you know, this weekend it's about football, but it's also about connecting with our alumni and meeting them where they are. And, you know, I, I think there's going to be a whole lot of, hey, how have you been doing? And I, I've missed you. And I think those are going to be some good memories this 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 weekend. And that's before we even get to the game. So it's, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Nothing brings Penn Staters together quite like Penn State football. And nothing brings our members together quite like the Penn State Alumni Association. And we want to start off by thanking our viewers who are members of the Alumni Association. And we're actually going to give one lucky uh, member who is viewing tonight or who has registered for the whole season um, four tickets to the home game against Villanova on September 25th. And so if you're registered to watch this program and you're a member of the Alumni Association, you're already entered into the drawing. You don't have to do anything. We'll contact you early next week if you're the winner. We'll announce it on next week's show who, who the big winner was. Um, but if you're watching and you're not already a member of the Alumni Association for, and might I say, the world's largest alumni association, what are you waiting for? Go to our, alum, go to our website at alumni.psu.edu, and you too can become a member of the world's largest alumni association. We also want to give a, a shout out and a mention to uh, for another opportunity for both members and non-members. At the Alumni Association, we are teaming up with PA Media Group, which publishes Penn Live, to offer a joint membership and subscription at a discounted rate for the first year. We know there are many loyal Penn State fans out there who follow Penn State related news on Penn Live, and we hope you take advantage of this offer. Current members who sign up will have their membership extended by an additional year. And if you're not a current member, you'll become a member of the Alumni Association through this offer. 
visit Penn Live's website to sign up. Uh, that link is going to also be shared um, and available in the chat areas on YouTube and on Facebook. And as always, you can keep up with Penn State football through a variety of outlets, including the football letter. We send two football letters weekly during the fall. So check your email inbox on Saturday morning for the one that goes to all Penn Staters. And then the one that's the members only content with the great photos from Steve Manuel and excellent perspective from John Black. You'll get that in your inbox on Mondays. John, you have been following the team now all August, all through camp. Uh, talk a little bit about your impressions of the team and what you've been able to see. Yeah, I mean, when you go to practice, really the biggest thing that jumps out to you is the amount of talent on this team. Uh, you know, last week after practice, uh, James Franklin said that this is the best tight ends group he's ever been around. I think, you know, that made some people stop and take notice about, you know, when you look at the the talent in that position that has come through Happy Valley over the last couple of years from to say this is the best tight ends group he's ever been around. I think that speaks a lot. Probably or maybe the biggest um, or the deepest and most talented running back room. You've got an improved offensive line. Um, you've got playmakers on both sides of the ball. And also, I think what's noteworthy is that, you know, Jonathan Sutherland and Sean Clifford, uh, they were announced as the first three-time captains in program history. Penn State football has had some pretty good teams and players over the years, so to be the first uh, three-time captain I, I think is noteworthy. And also you've got you know Sean on offense, Jonathan Sutherland on defense. I think that's that says a lot. Um, so it's the amount of talent. It's the amount of leadership. Mike Yursich is a fiery guy. When you go to practice, I mean, if you wouldn't know any better, you think he's one of the players. And so I'm interested to see how his enthusiasm you know, infuses the team. Um, and then just the one thing I'll mention, you know, like we're blessed to to go to photo day. Um, you know, the media gets to look at that and, you know, it takes so much dedication and hard work and sacrifice to become a, a division one athlete on scholarship. And when you see their, their, you know, their parents, their, their brothers and their sisters there and family members and friends, it's, you know, you just kind of want to stand off to the side and not get in the way, but to see the pure joy and enthusiasm on those faces, it's all led up to this. It's led up to, you know, on the verge of another season of Penn State football. And it's, you know, you, you try not to forget that, you know, for, for a lot of these players, this has been a, a lifetime's work of, of dedication and sacrifice. And so, you know, they're representing Penn State and, you know, certainly we're going to be excited to cheer them on this season. Absolutely excited to get the season started. Again, you can share questions, make comments. We're going to get as many of those up on the screen as we possibly can. I know another person who's excited about the start of football season her season's already started, right, John? You mentioned women's soccer um, off to a great start. Field hockey's um, and and uh, many of our 31 uh, sports are are have begun their seasons already. But we want to bring on the vice president for intercollegiate athletics. She is in her eighth year here at Penn State. She's a strong advocate for our student athletes and a strong believer in the power of the Penn State network. We're excited to welcome Sandy Barber. To football letter live sandy how are you paul john great to see you this is uh it's exciting it's thursday night we're almost uh almost there and as as you both have referenced you know we're already off to a great start it's uh cross country ran uh actually uh ran ran at six o'clock the women ran at six and the men uh, ran at uh, at 6 30 in, in lock haven uh, both men's and women's soccer field hockey volleyball all off to uh, uh, knock on wood uh, and undefeated starts uh, so far this season. Uh, women's soccer just uh, just started uh, in uh, at West Virginia tonight in, in what's always a barn burner in uh, in Morgantown. Yeah, a absolutely. Well, Sandy, like us, we imagine that you have felt all the excitement as the fall semester started, and even even leading up to it, some of our teams were were actually on their fields um, playing before the fall semester started. Once you saw soccer kick off, right? Was it a, was it a big sigh of relief that we kind of, we kind of made it? Um, talk about what those few days were like leading up to the, during the start of the seasons. Yeah, I, you know, Paul, it, it really wasn't relief because I, I have been, uh, I've been very confident uh, uh, all summer long, even as, as things kind of went, went up and down uh, that, that, you know, we, we have tools now that we didn't have a year ago, the vaccine probably being uh, number one of those, but uh, we, we've got tools, we've learned a lot, and and uh, I, I knew we were going to make this happen. So it was really, 
it was more uh, it was more about joy and and joy for our student athletes, but also joy for uh, for our community and 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 our crowds. And uh, the crowds have been great at, at at soccer and field hockey and volleyball. Well, we haven't been home yet in volleyball, but we're right. we're going to be tomorrow. Uh, and uh, it's really about you know John referenced it. It's really about the energy and uh, you know uh, the move-in weekend. The Saturday of move-in weekend, I got stuck in standstill traffic on College Ave, and I was excited about it. Right. It was awesome. Uh, I was so excited that, uh, that that we were back to having people uh, in State College, that, that campus was back brimming with students and and their beaming parents, uh, you know, for, for the new students. And uh, it's just, it's who we are. It's what we're about. And uh and that's a that's a lot of energy uh, and uh, and a lot of uh, activity in our community. It's really exciting. Hey, Sandy, a couple of weeks ago, you talked about the importance of lessons learned over the last 18 months. And you even talked about, you know, things that you and your colleagues have learned about yourselves and each other and even in society. Could you maybe just expand on that a little bit? And, you know, what are some of the lessons that you've learned as an athletic department over the last 18 months that are going to strengthen you as we move forward? Yeah, I, I love the I love the question, John, because I do think it's so important, and I've really challenged us as a department um, to as as we kind of get back to more familiar territory, if you if you will. I I hesitate to use the term normal for for a lot of reasons, but really challenge us not to leave behind. Certainly, there are things we want to leave behind, no no doubt about it, but. Uh, uh, but, but I don't want us to leave behind all the things we've learned. And, um, and I think they're really about resilience, how strong we truly are, uh, that, that we really can do hard things. Because this was hard for everybody, um, not just our athletic department and, and not just on students, but hard on our community, our businesses, our, our campus leadership, our, our leadership within the state. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really been, uh, been, been challenging, and, 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 but we've been up for the challenge. Uh, I think perspective is uh, is a really wonderful thing. Uh, yeah, we, we want to win games and and uh, and we want to win championships and and we want to have full stadiums. But you know, this pandemic has been about health and safety, and it's been about uh, uh, truly uh, you know uh, medicine and, and science and 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 we really have to put everything in, in its proper perspective. Um, I think it's also about uh, about being flexible. Um, I think that's something that's uh, that's really important for all of us, particularly in society today. And I think uh, being able to pivot, uh, being able to uh, kind of be nimble. I, I love that word. Um, and uh, being nimble and, and being able to adjust. Uh, I think all those things are really positive. And and I think we've uh, we've had to be at the top of our game uh, with those things in these last 18 months. So, Sandy, the the. The summer wasn't without uh, a lot of movement, a lot of um, interesting announcements. We saw um, Oklahoma and Texas make their commitment to jump to the SEC. The Big Ten, the ACC, the Pac-12 have recently announced an alliance. Uh, you played a pivotal role in those discussions. As, as much as you can share, can you take our audience into those discussions and what you were advocating for on behalf of the Big Ten and our student athletes and ultimately what this alliance means for Penn State and for the Big Ten TV contract? Yeah, well, I mean, if you take it at its most basic level, I mean, the, the SEC and ultimately Texas and Oklahoma did what they thought was was in their best interest to, to drive value. Uh, for, to drive the SEC invited them and, and they accepted because uh, they felt that it, that it added value to, to their current situation. Uh, so the, the response uh, across all of college athletics was about, okay, well, what, what makes sense uh, to the Big Ten? What makes sense to, to Penn State? And, and so we were, we were looking for uh, really on two different planes, uh, like-mindedness, uh, you know, associating ourselves with, with people who we share values with. Um, and, and then certainly, um, I said this in a press conference a couple of weeks ago, I'm not going to be Pollyannish enough to say this isn't about resources. And it's not about driving value in terms of the, side, the, uh, the, the dollars associated with your television contract, because absolutely it is. But that's not the only thing um, that it's about. So it really was about um, advocating for opportunity, opportunity for our student athletes. Uh, in, if, if, uh, 
uh, as we all know, the, this has not been worked out in terms of the, de- the details as it relates to scheduling. So if it works out that we end up playing some really interesting intersectional uh, matchups, uh, whether it be in football or basketball or, or wrestling or, or, or lacrosse or any of our sports, um, I think that's a fantastic opportunity for our students. But I also think it's a great opportunity for our community uh, to, to, to come together and, uh, uh, and really celebrate uh, who Penn State is. So also in the top in the news lately, really for a couple of months now is name image likeness. And, and you've talked about this, you know, pretty much at length recently. But even just today, you know, there was uh, information about partnering with, you know, the CBICC and the Adventure Bureau and, and Happy Valley Talent. There's a website now available. You know, how can Penn State alumni have a role in empowering student athletes and kind of, you know, how can they help out while, you know, obviously kind of like staying within the spirit of the rules and kind of like, moving forward because there's a lot going on here. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll be honest, John, there's only, there's only one rule and it's that, that the athletic department and the university can't be involved in arranging uh, the, these things, uh, the actual, the actual deals. So what I certainly would say uh, to, to our alumni is this is another way to support our student athletes, another way to support our, our program. Um, you know, it's going to be just like we've been phenomenal. Uh, our, our, uh, our fans, our alumni have been absolutely phenomenal uh, in terms of coming out and supporting our student athletes in the stands. That's the thing we've missed over the course of the, of the last year. And what I'm so looking forward to uh, is, uh, is seeing our fans again. We've seen them at soccer. We've seen them at field hockey. Um, we're going to see them at volleyball tomorrow night. And, um, and, uh, but, but name, image, and likeness is, is, uh, is another uh, really important way to support our student athletes uh, and, uh, and for us to be able to show uh, our current student athletes and, frankly, obviously, uh, future student athletes that Penn Staters support Penn Staters. And uh, name, image, and likeness certainly is, is one of those ways. But it's also one that's, that's got a little bit of a twist to it, which is as a, uh, as a business owner, uh, as, a, as an enterprise uh, owner, uh, or, or somebody who, who runs uh, an enterprise, uh, it, it's, it's beneficial to you as well in terms of having a student athlete, a popular student athlete, uh, to, uh, to help endorse uh, and promote your business. Uh, which also attracts, uh, uh, you know, uh, other other Penn Staters and, and, and alumni alike. So, Sandy, uh, I know this is it's football letter live. I know we're we're focused on football, but I know uh, you're proud of of all 31 sports affiliated with with Penn State. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier some of the the teams that have kicked off. Maybe uh, a little bit about some of the other teams that are currently in action. Well, we've got, uh, and I, I can't pull up my phone right this second. I'm a little busy uh, talking to you guys, but sure. uh, you know, we've got uh, we've got women's soccer at uh, at West Virginia tonight. Uh, both women's soccer and men's soccer are uh, are both uh, start out the season ranked, uh, and and I believe that they will continue uh, to, to climb. Uh, they are uh, both uh, undefeated uh, at this point in time. Women are at West Virginia tonight. Men are at West Virginia actually t- tomorrow night. Uh, volleyball is also ranked in the uh, in the top 15. Uh, they come uh, back from their tournament in Orlando last week uh, to a tournament here. So uh, obviously, hope to uh, to get folks out to see them. Actually, tomorrow night, our two uh, gold medal Olympians, uh, Haley Washington and uh, Micah Hancock, will be there. I don't know whether they have their gold medals with them or not, uh, but uh, actually the important part of that is those two really, really special young women. Uh, and, uh, and then field hockey had a great start uh, to, uh, to their season, went, to, went down to Virginia, defeated number six Virginia uh, on, the, uh, on, the first, uh, on the first night, uh, and then uh, pummeled William & Mary uh, on, uh, on Sunday to come back for, uh, for their home opener uh, 2-0. And then cross country uh, ran uh, ran tonight, uh, and I don't uh, I don't have those results uh, yet. But really looking for uh, for great. All of them are ranked, uh, and uh, looking for looking for great seasons there. And then obviously we just we head into the winter where uh, we're really really anxious uh, to see uh, what some of our winter sports can do. And obviously winter uh, welcome. Um, Micah Shrewsbury uh, to, to Happy Valley. He's just done a great job, obviously had some success already in recruiting um, and really excited to see uh, what, our, what our teams do in the winter. 
Well, hey, Sandy, we know you're busy. We really appreciate the time that you give to the Alumni Association and joining us on Football Letter Live. For those soccer fans who are wondering, it's in the ninth minute in Morgantown, a 0-0 tie. Uh, right now, Kat Asman has one big save to her credit. And so uh, that's great play done, by play, Paul. There, <laughs> <laughs> once once you're done here, you can tune in to uh, the women's soccer team and competition. Sandy, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Sandy. Paul, I, I appreciate it. I just want to say, uh, you know, how much we appreciate uh, your partnership and the alumni association and the support. Um, I can't say enough of, about the uh you know the the, the biggest alumni uh, association the biggest alumni group uh, largest in the world um it means the world you all mean the world to us to our students um you know that perspective i talked about before we all have it our students have it after having missed out from having our fans and our alumni in the stands last year and are grateful uh to to be back and and, and having crowds to play for absolutely thank you for joining us once again Thanks, Andy. Sandy. Absolutely. You're watching Football Letter Live. I'm Paul Clifford. I'm here with John Petitionock. Excited to be on the first episode of season number two. Uh, and we have a great uh, letterman joining us today. Uh, he is a Penn State letterman from 2005 to 2008. He played seven seasons in the NFL, including winning a Super Bowl with the Denver, Bronco, Denver Broncos. He set a Super Bowl record for the longest punt return, 61 yards to help the Broncos to a 24-10 win over the Carolina Panthers in Super Bowl 50. He's currently living in Denver. He owns his own photography business and company called Magic Wellness. He's a real estate investor along with being involved in many community projects. Please welcome Jordan Norwood to Football Letter Live. Jordan, how are you? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. Thanks a lot for having me. It's good to virtually welcome you back to Happy Valley. Can't wait right. for you to come home soon. It's, it's been too long. We were just, uh, my wife and I were just talking about when we can get back, get back up there. Well, hey, Jordan, you grew up in, in State College. You grew up in the shadow of University Park and Beaver Stadium. That um, proximity, what was the impact that that had on you as, as you viewed Penn State and, you know, started to figure out and, and know where you wanted to attend college and kind of what was the impact of that, you know, growing up so close to Penn State when you wanted to become a Division One athlete? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it obviously had a huge impact on my trajectory there after high school. Um, I moved to I moved to State College. Um, let's see, as a sophomore in high school. Um, so if if you've ever been to State College High School or know some folks that went there, you know that just about eighty percent of the graduating class ends up at Penn State uh, University Park. So uh, for me, that made things a lot easier. I had a, a bunch of pals that were there at Penn State with me. Um, you know, some guys. Uh, a few guys that played football, like Kevin Suey, and um, a, a few guys that didn't play football that are that are still some of my best friends. So uh, it was really cool to have that experience with with close friends of mine. Yeah, you mentioned the eighty percent that end up from state high going to Penn State, but there's always that twenty percent, right? That there's the there's that uh, major university in your backyard, but but you you have your eye to get out of state college maybe and get out of town. So. What was it about Penn State football and uh, that kind of kept you here at Penn State? Because you had options. You could have gone to play at a number of different places. What was the decision-making process like to stay home and play for the Nittany Lions? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it was mostly the opportunity to play Division I football. Um, I, I did have other opportunities, but not many of them were to play, um, at, or none of them specifically, none of them were to play at at the level that the Big Ten plays at. Um, I mean, I could have went to Bucknell and played football and basketball, um, a few other schools, but uh, the receivers coach at the time when I was being recruited, uh, Kenny Carter, he pulled me aside um, my senior year of high school and said, hey, you, you can play at this level. Um, I know you're 5'8 and 140 pounds, but um, you know you can play at this level. So it took, uh, it took some encouragement from people outside of myself for me to um, you know, really take that step. So Jordan, you played for for Coach Joe Paterno. We've we've heard a lot of stories about Coach Paterno over the years. We've even heard some impressions, none of them prompted by us, just completely brought up naturally by the Letterman we have on the show. Um, you know, what was the impact that Coach Paterno had on you, both as a player and as a person? You know, I mean, it's it's I mean, it's tough to put in words. Um, 
I mean, as a player, I learned so much, obviously, um, from skills and, and um, you know, tactics and, and all of those things that took my career to the uh, furthest level, really, that I never thought I would have reached. Um, but as a person, even more so punctuality, um, you know, the things that that I've learned for uh, my family and for my businesses uh, that I can also attribute to, to Joe are just, uh, you know, countless, really. Any specific stories that stand out after all these years or is it just too many to count? Um, I mean, there, there's obviously there's a whole lot. Um, I mean, there's my my dad was on the coaching staff while I was there at Penn State. So there was the times that uh, that Joe called me Brian um, as I came off the field, even though I'm, I'm Jordan. And um, there was one one specific time that he called me Brian. Um, that for some reason I had the courage to bark back at him and say, and yell at him and say, I'm Jordan, uh, because it was after I dropped the pass in, at Wisconsin. But um, I mean, just, I mean, just an inc incredible person. Uh, he's somebody that uh, he, he met a friend of mine in high, from, from when I went to high school, he met this uh, friend of mine one time. Um, and then about three months later, he saw my friend crossing the street uh, on campus and Joe rolled down his window and said, hey, I recognize you. I don't, I don't know where I, where I recognize you from, but how's it going? Like, how are you? And I mean, it's just, I mean, of all the people that Joe meets on a daily ba basis, he, he remembered my, uh, you know, my buddy who's just a Penn, uh, student at Penn State. And, and that stuck with my buddy. My, my buddy still tells that story. That's, that's amazing. We, we hear a lot of uh, Coach Paterno car stories. Not all of them, not all of them end that way, but... Um, we do hear some great stories about about coach and interactions that he's had with students on campus. You know, Jordan, you talked a little bit about um, your recruitment process, Penn State being a D1 offer, a couple FCS offers. Um, and then yet you you make your way to the NFL, right? It, it's it's a it, it's an unusual path to the NFL. Talk about some of the lessons that you learned here at Penn State that prepared you to play at the next level? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely um, things that I learned as a football player um, that, that helped me. I mean, Mike McQuarrie was a great wide receivers coach for us that, um, I mean, he was a, a first time wide receivers coach too with, right. uh, with freshman wide receivers, me, Derek Williams, Deion Butler, Justin King, all freshmen, and Mike was a freshman coach pretty much. Uh, so we were all we were all really learning, but that made us um, that also made us naive to the cap that we had, and uh, and we just we just knew that we had no cap and and could go and and win games, and and we were, we're really just you know fresh minded on that. So I kind of took that approach uh, going into the NFL and um, not being drafted into the NFL and going to the Browns and um, you know saying to myself, there's there's no reason that I you know, can't make this football team. And uh, I didn't make the football team, I got cut. But, um, but you know, you just, you just persevere and, and you move on and you keep playing, you keep going to practice, you keep working hard. And um, I think that's one of the things that kept me in the NFL for so long was um, that work ethic and, and the consistency really um, that coaches could count on me and all that. Oh my, you, you just mentioned like the who's who of uh, the who's who of receivers here at Penn State. What a receiver room that you were a part of at that time when you played here. Yeah, I mean, great guys. I mean, guys that I still talk to this day, to this day. I talk to Dion just about every other every other week. So, um, I mean, great memories to have. Yeah, almost seems like there wouldn't be enough footballs to go around uh, for the talent there. Um, very few players get to. Uh, play in the Super Bowl, much less win a Super Bowl. Um, and then you did what you did in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl record, 61-yard punt return. Talk about that, the Super Bowl experience and, and that, um, that memory. Oh, I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal memory to have. And, and, I mean, most specifically because my friends and family got to come out to, uh, to California there and – and cheer me on and, and celebrate with me after the game. But, um, you know, it's one of those things that uh, before the game, as you watch Lady Gaga walk 
10, 10 feet past you to, to get her, you know, sound check or whatever. Um, and you stand next to Peyton Manning when the national anthem's being sung. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you have to pinch yourself or you just have to wait till you get hit in the mouth, you know, that first play for, for things to, you know, it's not back to reality a little bit. Hey, Jordan, Penn Staters are everywhere. We just talked about, you know, they're, they're traveling to Madison this week and they'll, they'll travel, you know, throughout the season for all sports. Any interesting or memorable stories of running into Penn State alumni, you know, even, you know, when you're in college or even in the NFL or even now as, a, as an entrepreneur? Uh, it, it happens all the time. Um, I mean, I've, I've ran into an alumni in the airport in, I want to say it was Madrid. Um, you know, just boarding the flight and, hey, are you are you Jordan or did you, you know, did you play at Penn State? I was, you know, so struck up a conversation there um, here at my my local rec center here in Denver. Um, I was just uh, on a treadmill next to a guy that uh, is also a Penn State alum. And, and obviously we we chopped it up for a good couple hours um, instead of working out. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, the Penn State alumni community is is huge as sandy said the the largest in the world and and you feel that you know jordan we talk about preparing student athletes for a lifetime of impact and you know the whole concept of success with honor is is being successful on the field being successful in the classroom being successful in the community and you've certainly found success in all three of those areas you're involved with a number of community service projects in the denver area uh, called the Denver Dream Center. Talk a little bit about your goals and your mission and, and what inspired you to get involved with the Dream Center. Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, the, the Denver Dream Center is an organization that um, I kind of just hopped in with, uh, met their executive director back in 2015. And um, it just came up, became a part of my you know yearly routine is to hop in and volunteer. And um, I mean, they do great work in the Denver area. Um, I have a four and a five year old here at home um, and just just starting to go to school now. So, you know, when, when you have a place that you're you know starting to put down some roots, you want to make sure that you're doing your part to contribute to the progress of the community. And, um, and I think the Denver Dream Center is a great opportunity uh, to do that. They they do a lot with um, disadvantaged youth. Um, uh, they try to re reduce re recidivism rates with with guys and women coming out of prison, um, homelessness, mental health. Um, they just they just do it all really, and uh, they're they're big cog in the in the way this community works. So I'm happy to volunteer there when I can. Hey, hey Jordan, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, kind of following up on that, Jordan, you've um, like we've talked with so many lettermen who have given back to the community. Was there something about the experience at Penn State that kind of led to that lifetime commitment of kind of just giving back and, and getting involved in the community? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's especially especially having gone to State College High School and, um, you know, having those I mean, with my with my dad as a football coach, too, uh, but having those interactions with uh, college football players or, or college athletes in general, it just, I mean, it just has a great impact on, on young um, men and women and um, those who are aspiring to play sports or just go to college and be successful in general. And I mean, to be honest, it could be the fourth string center that you meet and, you know, get inspired by, but um, you find out that that makes that can make a difference in a kid's um, in a kid's perspective and in, in self worth too. So um, I, yeah, I think it's I think it's very important, and I learned that at Penn State volunteering um, with Special Olympics and other um, and other programs, and um, you know, it's still important. You know, it, it's interesting. I, I have a, and I hope I get the details of this story right, but I believe your dad was also on the staff at Baylor. Um, in, in his career. And um, uh, I, was, I was once traveling through an airport. I was in Houston and I was, I was in the restroom and, and I looked next to me and it's my college roommate, a guy named Christian Acuff, who was, a, who was a, an assistant coach here at Penn State, a graduate assistant. Uh, but he and your dad were, were, were there going out on a recruiting trip. I was coming through and uh, 
I got to say hello. I've been a lifelong Penn State fan and obviously knew Brian Norwood, knew the name. And uh, but just a random, random Penn State encounter in the Houston airport. Acuff, Acuff is a great is a great individual. And I um, that's a name that comes up and I can't help but smile. Um, yeah, he's he's somebody that I miss talking to. And uh, yeah, I would love to catch up with him sometime soon. Yeah, Chris, Chris is a great guy. He was a he was a fun roommate of mine at Bloomsburg. We we went there. We were football um, teammates together, and I believe he's coaching at Syracuse now, um, and is still still doing the the coaching thing. He's been all over the country. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about we've touched on the power of the Penn State network as it relates to you running into Penn Staters um, around around the country, around the world, but. How important is it? And talk about your connections back to the current team and, and how uh, Coach Franklin keeps Letterman involved uh, and connected to the program today. Uh, sure. I mean, that's that's been, um, you know, after after a few decade long tenure of, of Joe, it's it's been uh, interesting space to navigate is is that connection with alumni for new head coaches. Um, and I think, I think, uh, coach Franklin's done a great job with that. Um, to put it simply, I got a text message today from, I think it's from Alan Zemitis who, um, who is there on staff now. And, um, it's a group chat, a bunch of Penn state alumni fo football guys. And it's, Hey guys, uh, we got Wisconsin this week. Um, you know, it, it talks a little bit about the game. It talks, talks a little bit about, um, you know, what, what the football team has in front of them. Um, you know, it asks us to, you know, make sure we stay tuned and uh, interact with the with the current players. Um, so, you, so, you know, it's, it's small things like that. It's just it's just a quick text, text message. Um, but it got me engaged. And um, there's some intention behind uh, what's going on at the football program right now. That's um, in order to engage uh, former alums like myself. It's great. It's a lot. It's a lot of little things that make it a big thing. Right. Absolutely. Hey, Jordan, that kind of wraps up in, or that leads into to what we can wrap up with. When you watch, you know, Penn State football as a former player in the Letterman, what are you looking for as you watch the game? Because I have to imagine that you notice things that the casual fan probably doesn't notice. So kind of, you know, what's it like watching Penn State and are there things that you look out for? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh I mean, to be honest, I, the, the first thing I look for is where's number 24? How's he playing? <laughs> Who is he? Like, you know, I look for my jersey number and, um, you know, see how he's doing and, and cheer him on the loudest. But, um, you know, other things I look for are, you know, what's what's that slot receiver doing? Um, you know, I'm really, really excited for Parker Washington and Dotson. I mean, the whole receiving core, I'm really excited for uh, to see him get out there. Um, and then I also look for guys that uh, also went to State College High School. So I'm, um, you know, high on Keaton Ellis and excited for him also. And, um, you know, that's that's just my perspective. I'm I'm less of a X and O spectator and more of, a, you know, relationships and, uh, you know, personal um, personal stories that I like to follow. Well, we appreciate you have, having you on the show, Jordan. We were thrilled to have you on to kick off the season. I mean, you obviously represent Penn State well, both in college and the NFL now, you know, as a successful entrepreneur. And so we hope to stay in touch with you. We'd hope to have you on the show again. You know, at some point, I, I know our alumni enjoy hearing from you. So if you ever need anything, we're here and we appreciate your time on Football Letter Live. Sure. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. And hopefully I can catch you guys in person sometime this season. We look forward to that. Thanks, Jordan. Be well. Thanks, Jordan. Take care, guys. You're watching Football Letter Live. I'm here with John Petitnock. Next up on the program, we're going to welcome Phil Bauer. Phil is the president of the Madison chapter of the Penn State Alumni Association. He resides right there in Madison, uh, where Nittany Nation is going to converge on in just a couple of hours. I'm sure there's some early arrivers there already in the Madison area. He lives there with his wife, Carrie, and his three boys. He's a native of Mannheim, Pennsylvania, and is a 1999 graduate of Penn State with a BS in geo-environmental engineering and a 2001 master's degree in mineral processing. While at Penn State, he was a member of the Blue Band. He was active with Thon, dancing twice. We're going to talk about that because it's a, 
it's a special kind of person that knows the pain of dancing once that decides to do it again. But he danced twice in the white building and then served twice as operations captain after Thon moved to Rec Hall. Welcome into Football Letter Live, Phil Bauer. Phil, how are you? Hi, guys. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hey, we're, we're excited to have you. I'm, I'm going to pull it out right now. I have my I have my blue cheese head. I'm all ready to come to Madison. Uh, talk a little bit about the Madison chapter and what are some of the things that you do year round to keep Penn Staters connected? Um, sure. A little bit about the Madison chapter. This is, you know, the one thing, you know, the cheese heads make your hair look great afterwards. Yeah. Um, can't be vain. Um, Madison chapter, we're a pretty young chapter. Uh, we've only, we got chartered in, in 2012. Uh, so we're, we're pretty young, but we've got a good good mix of, of folks who have lived here for decades in Madison. And then we've got students coming here for grad school at UW or working for some of the biotech and healthcare firms we have. And um, you know, we primarily serve South Central Wisconsin, west to the Mississippi River is kind of our territory. And the Wisconsin chapter, which is based primarily in Milwaukee, gets the rest of the state, uh, which is pretty big territory. Um, so, you know, we, some people choose to maybe go to one or the other based on where they are, but we, uh, we're in a big 10 town. So, uh, obviously we get Penn State, Penn State sports coming here quite a bit. So that's something we like to do is, uh, going out and cheering on our teams whenever they come. Um, you know, we get most of them here, volleyball, soccer teams, basketball. Uh, we just had women's hockey, ice hockey out here for the first time in 2019 men's ice hockey. So it's a good time. Um. That's kind of, we do, I guess I should mention, you know, we've got a, a monthly pub trivia team called the Willard Preachers uh, that, that pre-COVID uh, met monthly, did bar trivia, pub trivia monthly in person. They've been doing it virtual for a while now. Uh, we do some service projects. We help out with a food pantry garden. Uh, it's actually run by a lot, uh, number of retired UW Ag professors. So we enjoy some good natured ribbing with them and we show up in our Penn State gear and, and help them. We remind them that Penn State, you know, does have some ag programs as well. So we can we can hold our own in the garden. That's amazing. The Willard Preachers, you know, that's the you're the second chapter that I have heard that has used that for uh, for one of their team names. The Metro D.C. chapter um, uses that for their softball team. Uh, the Willard Preachers down there competing in Washington, D.C. as well. Hey. Talk a little bit about what inspired you to get involved with the chapter and take a leadership position. Sure. Um, well, I, you know, I'm a Pennsylvania native, and and after I, I spent six years in state college, um, I probably would have stayed more, but decided it was time to move on. And I, I lived in D.C. and Philly. I met my wife on the East Coast, and she's a Wisconsin native from Janesville. So uh, in 2007, we moved out here. And at that time, there was only the Wisconsin chapter, which was based uh, in Milwaukee. So it's about an hour, hour and a half drive. Um, you know, I had young kids and it was, it's just hard. It's, you know, it's a big time commitment uh, to try and get out there for events. So, um, you know, a big, big Penn State fan, blue band alum. And, and uh, I was just like, I like hanging out, watching the games with people. So I reached out to Tom Hammond at the Alumni Association. He was our liaison at the time. And, and we, did the groundwork and said, do we have enough people here to support a chapter? And uh, we did. So we had an intro meeting and, and got a board together and, and basically founded the chapter. And um, I was president. <laughs> I'm still president. Uh, I don't want this to be a lifetime appointment. I want to make that clear. So if there's anyone watching here from the Madison chapter who wants to jump in at some point, you know, we can do that. But um, it was really just you know, finding a forum so I could meet people to go to the volleyball game with, you know, go to the soccer game um, and, and do stuff with. So that's that's kind of the story and, and how we got it done. And, and it's, you know, it's going pretty well. Hey, Phil, with uh, Penn State football coming to Madison this weekend, first time in nearly a decade, what type of an opportunity does this offer? Does this open up to the chapter? And can you share with our, with our audience, you know, what you have planned this weekend and, and how you're going to capitalize on it? Sure. Yeah, thanks. I mean, we've had the state circle for a long time. It's, it's been uh, like eight years um, since since Penn State was at last out here for football. So, uh, you know, we were hoping actually I was I was doing a little push. A, a friend of mine from Blue Band is one of the assistant directors at the Blue Band. And actually the new UW marching band director, this is his second year, 
He's a former assistant director for the Blue Band. I was pushing hard to get the whole Blue Band to come out here for a game, but COVID kind of threw a wrench in those plans. But uh, we've got a Friday night alumni mixer tomorrow night. Paul said earlier uh, we had overwhelming registration and had to actually, it sold out. We had to close registration. For folks coming to that, you know, we really want to raise money for our scholarship fund. We have a joint endowed scholarship fund with the Wisconsin chapter. Um, you can maybe see in the background here, this is our sign from the, the last time we were out here, we were at like 10,000. Now we're up to about, we're up to Green Bay now. We're at Green Bay 20,000. We want to get up to Superior, Wisconsin, 50,000. Um, so we're going to have um, raffles. We're going to be you know taking donations. Um, you can see on the ticker on the bottom of the screen, you can, you can text blue cheese, B L U E cheese to four, one, four, four, four to donate to our scholarship fund. But, um, this year we gave a $1,000 award to one, one undergrad student. And this is for students from Wisconsin who go to Penn state. And I think it's no, no shock that out of state tuition at Penn state is, you know, it, it's expensive, especially compared to in-state schools. And the applicants we had this year for our scholarship, like none of them had an obvious Penn State connection. No, you know, the parents that went Penn State. These were students who chose Penn State because of a major uh, campus. Uh, some of them are in a world campus program because they're veterans, they're, you know, single parents, and the world campus is allowing them to get a degree that they can't get anywhere else. And, um, you know, and some other challenges in their lives right now. And we're like, wow, like, if, if we could help, you know, we want to help more than one student a year. So getting Penn State alums out here, you're always very generous. So uh, that, that's a big deal for us. You know, we don't we don't get this many fans in town at, at one time very often anymore. So following up on that, you know, I would imagine that you're going to meet a lot of Penn Staters this weekend, probably for the first time. What will be your message to them and, and how they can kind of help and be active? Because you're obviously busy. You're obviously having an impact. Kind of like what will be your message to, to Penn Staters you meet for the first time? Sure. I mean, if you're coming from out of town, you know, just welcome. Uh, we think Madison is the second best Big Ten town. Uh, State College obviously being number one. And, uh, you know, it is a beautiful city. Uh Check out the Capitol building. There's a big, massive farmer's market around the Capitol Square Saturday morning. Uh, have a beer at the Union Terrace along the lake. You know, it's a beautiful city. So we hope you take advantage. Uh, if you're from Wisconsin and you're not involved with one of the chapters, get involved. Uh, we always use can use volunteers. And the more people we have, the more activities we can do and, and the more different activities. So definitely that. Um, other than that, I say I just hope our fans represent Penn State well. Um, one of my friends sent out an email this morning. It's been 648 days since Wisconsin has had fans in the stand for a football game. Wow. Madison really just reopened for business in June. A lot of restaurants um, just opened for in-person dining this summer. They're trying to staff up. Um, so just you know, be respectful, be patient, um, just be a good fan. That, that's kind of what we're looking for. Oh. Uh, public service announcements. We have a local mask mandate uh, indoors. UW Madison has a mask mandate. So if you're coming, bring masks. You're going to need them indoors. Um, if you come to our mixer, bring cash. If you go to the football game, bring a credit card. Uh, Camp Randall is cashless. Uh, they only take cards now for food and, and merchandise. So that's that's my PSA. Yeah. So, hey, let's talk cheese or more specifically <laughs> these cheese heads. Sure. How did the tradition of the blue cheese head start? And most importantly, will you be wearing one this weekend? And and <laughs> and also, how do people get a cheese head if they want one? Sure. Um, so this was the brainchild originally of the Wisconsin chapter uh, about 2003. Most of you have probably seen on TV the yellow cheese heads, you know, associated with mostly with the Green Bay Packers. They're made here in Milwaukee by a company called Fomation. Um, Around 2003, I think Maj Michelle Jasper might have been the president of the Wisconsin chapter at the time. They started talking about hand painting these things themselves. And someone said, why don't we talk to Fomation? Uh, and so they managed to get Fomation to make them blue cheese heads. This one has a, a painted on the five toe, maybe not anatomically correct 1990s era. Paul, this is the one of, of my college years. So, I, you know, some fondness for that one. But so this was the original. They sold out pretty quickly. Um, so after the Madison chapter, we were around, we said, Hey, why don't we do another run? And so we went in with the Wisconsin chapter. This was the second run. You know, these are officially licensed. They've got the, the newer paw print 
four toes. Uh, Wisconsin chapter has some of these left. They're going to be selling them Friday night at the mixer. Um, and so if you want one, um, you could reach out to uh, the Wisconsin chapter. It's actually, this is their email going on the ticker. Um, and they can, if they've got some left, they can set you up and see if they could ship them. Uh, and then I'm going to, um, I had some color samples that Formation sent me that didn't have Paul's on just when they were trying to get the colors right. Um, so I, I spray painted one of them. I made a replica of the best football in best helmet in college football. That's awesome. um, there's two of these. I have one. This is the other one. I'm going to raffle this off Friday night at the mixer. So uh, someone might be wearing this one at the game. But uh, am I going to be wearing? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to take mine into the game, to be honest. They're, they're heavy and hot. Um, uh, I'll, I'll probably just be wearing a hat, but uh, we'll see. Game time decision. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to bring mine to the mixer Friday night. We can get a picture together. And, uh, and I look forward to it. It's my only opportunity to wear this thing. And so I'm definitely going to use it. Awesome. I spotted it on your shelf during one of the Nittany Lion Club, the coaches' caravans, I think, right. uh, back in, in May or June. I, I saw it sitting back there. So. Oh, I love it. It's, it's one of the, the more unique and creative things that our chapters have produced. I love it. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Phil. Appreciate you joining us. Um, appreciate everything that you do for, for, for Penn State and for the Alumni Association. We'll see you this weekend and uh, stay safe and we'll see you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Phil. All right, thanks, Phil. All right, John. Great show so far. Three fantastic guests, but there's a game that we have to get to. And so uh, talk about uh, the upcoming game uh, against Wisconsin. Um, I know you have past let you've looked through the past football letters from from John Black and even going back to Ridge Riley. Talk a little bit about the upcoming game. Yeah, so you meant you referenced the letters. I mean, people can't see it on the camera, but my in my desk is like nothing but piles and piles of, of football letters. We've been going through the archives, and so the the 2008 game stood out to us. Um, that was, of course, one of the the years that Penn State won the Big Ten and went to the Rose Bowl. And so we'll have a couple of those on site Saturday at the pep rally. The legendary John Black will be signing and autographing those for the folks in attendance. And so, um, you know, that was one of the times that Penn State has been to Wisconsin recently. Um, and then, of course, the game Saturday. And so, you know, Wisconsin's going to run the ball. Everyone knows that. I, I wouldn't even say you need to stop the run. But if you can stop Wisconsin from running the ball the entire game, stop them in the second half, I, I think that will be important. You know, Sean Clifford has gotten a lot of um, – he's probably been the most talked about player on the team during fall camp and leading up to the season, and for good reason. I would say – if you would tell us that Penn State's going to have one or no turnovers this game, they go from being a small underdog to probably a four or five point favorite. And so I think if they do that, they'll be fine. Um, and, you know, I know you know everyone talks about a fast start, but this is going to be it's not only the season opener. It's the first time that, you know, Penn State's going to be playing in front of, you know, 60, 70, 80,000 fans in a year. And so how do you. It, in some ways, you can't prepare for that. I mean, you know, the, the team plays music at practice and, and does those things. But I think I think the team that you see in the first half might not necessarily be the team we see all game and certainly not all season. And so I think once we get to the second quarter, um, you know, the offense settles in. I, I think it's going to be a good game. I know, you know, opening up with a conference opponent might not be ideal, but I think I, I think we're going to learn a lot about um, Penn State this weekend. And I think there's a lot to be confident about. And so it's it, it should be a pretty good game. You know, the first three games of the season, John, is as brutal of the first three games as um, I can remember in recent history in terms of uh, in terms of our schedule. Um, you know, you think about opening on the road at Wisconsin, right? The perennial power of the West in the Big Ten. You come home uh, to Ball State, which which could potentially be a trap game, right? With us looking forward to the Auburn game. Ball State, 21 out of 22 starters returning on a team that won the MAC last year. And so they are, they are not going to roll over for us. Uh, and then Auburn, right, a team from the SEC coming into Beaver Stadium. Um, if, we, if we can survive September, it can be a very special season here for the Nittany Lions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, I think after the, lead, the year that, you know, having to wait last year, I think everyone is going to be ready to go on Saturday. I don't think there's going to be any, you know, kind of sleepwalking or like, oh, like they are ready to play 
Um, the players are ready. The coaches are ready. Certainly the fans are ready. And you know what? I, I think we deserve a September like this. I think we, you know, it's going to be so much fun watching Auburn come in. It's, this will probably be the first time that a lot of fans see an SEC team play at Beaver Stadium in the, you know, in the regular right. season. Um, and so, you know, they're going to come in. The games are going to be fun. It's going to be a whiteout. You know, we're going to have fans back in the community and, you know, everyone's going to do the right thing. We're going to stay safe, but it's, it's okay to have a little bit of fun. I mean, I think we've all deserved it. And so certainly to your point, you know, if we go into October, you know, looking good, you know, ranked in the top 12 or 15, I think that sets Penn State up for, you know, the perennial clash in Columbus. And, you know, you look at their schedule, it, it you know, it sets up where, you know, it's probably going to be us or Ohio State again in the East Division. And so that will be a good game in Columbus this year, no doubt. But if, if James Franklin was listening to us, he would just be shaking his head. And we're talking about games in October. Wisconsin, it's like Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yeah. So. First things first, but yeah, sir. I mean, we're fans, and you know, we're alumni. We we're, we can we can look ahead. Um, coaches and players don't have that luxury, but it, yeah, it should be a. If if September goes well, you would think the rest of the season is going to go pretty well too. Absolutely. Well, John, there it is. The first episode of Football Letter Live is in the books. Shout out Kevin Lashane. I see Howard Lerner, uh, Katie Dunn, Maury Handler. Uh, thank you for tuning in, Sharon Skidneski out in San Francisco, tuning in, Lisa Heck from Las Vegas, uh, a lot of familiar names. I see Lily Hall and Dave Snyder and RJ Newhouse. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Football Letter Live. Again, check your inbox on Saturday for the Football Letter, which we will be delivering on Saturdays to all alumni. A special edition of that is going to have the link for this show so that you can re-watch uh, the interview with Jordan Norwood and hear Sandy again, and obviously Phil Bauer talk about what's going on. Uh, and then Mondays, you can see the recap of John, from John Black and the great photos from Steve Manuel in your inbox on Monday. Check out the updated Football Letter Live landing page on our website. I know those links are in the chat. You can find how you can find all the information about how you can be involved with the Alumni Association during football season here. Uh, great to see, looking forward to seeing 700 folks at our pep rally up in Madison. Unfortunately, the band and the cheerleaders and, and the Nittany Lion won't be able to make this trip. They'll be on future trips, uh, but we're just excited to gather as a, as a Nittany Lion family once again to cheer on Penn State to victory over Wisconsin. John, any final thoughts? I am ready for kickoff. I think many alumni agree with me. And you know what? It's you said it. It's Saturday is going to be a fun day. It's going to be a time of it's just going to be fun. We're going to look forward to it. And, you know, we're going to thank Phil in advance for everything he and his chapter does. And so for those heading to Madison, safe travels. We'll see you there. And those watching at home, you know, enjoy the game. It should be a good one. Absolutely. Hey, John, what can we what can we expect on next week's show? All right, so we've got one of the all-time great linebackers, Paul Puzlozny. He is going to be on the show next week. We also, ha also have uh, Kathy Hume, the chapter president of the Center County chapter, the hometown chapter of the Alumni Association right here in Center County, uh, Pennsylvania, Happy Valley. And so they'll be on next week. We're going to have game highlights from Madison. Uh, we're going to also have some blog features. And so a lot more to come. I feel like tonight was a lot of fun. Hopefully the folks tuning in enjoyed it, and uh, we'll have a lot more this year. Well, that's a wrap on Football Letter Live. Cue the alma mater. We'll see you next week. We are Penn State.